Dear respectable audience, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we are joined again here live from the SWF studios. And just before we begin this episode, I would like you to like the video, subscribe, and share with your friends. Alhamdulillah, today I'm joined by uh, my beloved elder brother, Sheikh Hafiz Sayyid Muhammad Hedir Tirmizi, and an up and up and coming prospect in the world of boxing, Jibran Bilal. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, how are you guys today? I'm good, thank you, thank you for having me here. And Shasab, how are you today? Alhamdulillah, I'm good, how are you? Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. First of all, we would like to welcome you on the panel with us today. And uh, because you are from the British Pakistani community and you are known as a professional boxer, what inspired you to begin boxing? Um, as a youngster, always somewhat messing around. I yeah. wasn't a bad kid, I would mess around in school. I would watch wrestling, I like yeah. wrestling. I like fighting, play fighting. My dad yeah. was kind of big on that. Um, but really, I was watching a TV show. It was called 24-7, you know, Mayweather. Yeah. And a guy named Oscar De La Hoya. They had this thing called 24-7. And I watched it and I said, oh, I need to try this. I need to try this. And I watched the fight. I was blown away. I thought, yeah, it was a good fight. I like the build-up. I like the hype. I like the attention. I like everyone who come out to watch the fight sort of thing. And then I said to my parents, I said, oh, I want to start boxing. I'll start boxing just after that. So how, how old were you when you... I first? was 12 going on to 13. So yeah. this was the fight happened. I remember it was May 2007. I was end of year eight. And then I started maybe a month or so later. And then there was a summer break because boxing in the amateurs, in the amateur leagues, there's like seasons. You know, football, there's yeah. like from August to, to June or July, whatever it is. We have... So... I went after, just after the season, I went during the month of August, 07 or so, and I turned 13 and I was boxing, and then I just stayed on it ever since. So, you know, how was it, like, because you're from an Asian background and an Asian mm. family, so how was it, like, to convince your parents that you wanted to take uh, boxing as a profession and as a career, and not something which is, like, the typical or usual route, which is becoming a doctor, a lawyer? Uh, no, my mom wasn't too keen. Yeah. But she's, she could see that I really enjoyed going. Yeah. And she liked that I was active. I was staying out of trouble. Yeah. I was going to the gym. I was, you know, staying busy. I was making use of my time. How, how long did it take you to actually get to uh, becoming a professional? How long did you spend training at the gym? Professional. So my first amateur fight was April 2008. All right. And then... And then as time goes on, after four or five years, I maybe had 40 fights or so after four or five years of boxing and learning and making a whole load of mistakes. But that's what it is. You're growing up, you're making mistakes just in life mm -hmm. in general. And then come 2017, so maybe nine years, but I was young. I couldn't turn pro. I could turn pro at 18. So I was 13 to 18. That was the time I was able to turn pro. But mentally, I wasn't ready. You know what I mean? And physically, maybe I was there. I was able to compete with, with men. When I was 15, my dad was there. My dad used to take me to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday, three days a week. I used to box with men, grown men. And then I was, so I was ready physically from so a young you, age. So do you think you made a mistake turning professional a bit too late? No, because I wanted to turn professional. Maybe you could say at 18, 19, I could have turned professional. Mm -hmm. But looking back... It's always, oh, I could have done this, I could have done that. But mentally, I know what I was like when I was 18, 19, 20. I wasn't there. Yeah. Now I'm a grown man and I know how to carry myself. I'm there, I feel like I'm able to, you know, communicate with people and sit down with people and not go about my business. But I remember at that age, I was just young and reckless and doing this and doing that and lost a bit of focus. But I should have turned pro at 22 and I went to go... I signed with a manager at 22. This was 2017. Mm -hmm. I was good and ready. Then, alhamdulillah, I felt I was ready. But as a professional, you need to go through medical uh, yeah. to gain your license. And so that's an eye test. Optician, you need to see opticians to test your eyes. You need to see, uh, do your blood checks. And I, I passed those two. But the third one I failed in was my brain scan. Put mm -hmm. me in an MRI machine. And they found something in my brain. They said, you're not allowed to box. So really? after eight years of boxing and nine years of boxing, they say, you're not allowed to box no more. And what was that like? Heartbreaking. Yeah. I start crying. Every time I think about yeah. it, like, it's sad. They say, you're not allowed to box no more. It's just too dangerous for you. Yeah. So then I was just thinking, I just wasted all this time boxing. I wanted to be a professional. <clears throat> These guys said, I can't box. 
they recommended that I see a specialist in London where I grew yeah. up. <clears throat> so I've seen a specialist. They had to look at my scans. They put me through. I had an MI with the, the they call British Boxing Border Control. I had an MI with those guys. They said, no, no way. So then they said, you best to go have a CT scan with these guys. So I had a CT scan. I seen the specialist. They compared the scans. And they said, Alhamdulillah, you actually all right. It's not as bad as these guys think. So they were, they were going back and forth between each other. I was sitting at home, whatever I was doing, not boxing, maybe eating and working and just going about my day. I wasn't boxing no more. Then they called me. They said, you're okay to box. I received a letter. So I, was, I managed to get my license again back in 2018. Mm-hmm. So does this license ever expire? Once a year. Oh, once a year. Once a year. And you have to have to do the checks again. Right. And the checks are quite pricey as well. You need funding. And right. so you need sponsorship, you need funding mm-hmm. just to do all the medical checks. So it's quite, it's quite ha, unfortunate. Has that, has that thing ever been an obstacle again for you? Whatever they found in this case? Oh, yeah, for sure. So I don't know if you looked at my regime. I've been somewhat inactive. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, COVID 2020. And so there was not much boxing anyway during that, mm. during that year. But 2021, I went for my license again. And they said there's been a change in your brain scan. There's slight changes. But my trainer said that's H- Has that increased or has it decreased? N- uh, neither or so, sort of thing. It's, this, is a, this is a change and you want to get checked out. Is it something serious you would say? No, not serious. They've looked at it as well. This, uh, my trainer said, and those people around me, they said it's very common. You don't even need to box for a change in your brain scan. You could work in a, in, in a shop. Mm-hmm. And as you grow older, your brain naturally changes, so regardless of boxing. Mm-hmm. So they they held me back for that, but I had a problem with my eye, which was the main concern. Mm-hmm. And so there's a lot of backstory. Yeah. People don't see people just see me box and train, and then a lot of guys used to say, "Oh, you're not boxing no more. You're hanging around, going around with AJ and Joshua and doing this and doing that. You're not focused on your own career." But I've always wanted to box. I've been trying to trying to fight. Um, I had a problem with my eye. I was losing sight in my eye. It would mm-hmm. go for a few minutes and it would come back. And, they, they, and I went to see the, special, the doctor and they followed me to, see, to go see the hospital. And I seen a stroke. They put me down as a stroke. That's what they said. They, well, that's what I inquired. But I passed all the checks. I had a seven-day ECG. This was only 2021, last year. Mm-hmm. Seven-day ECG. I had all the blood checks. I had all the brain scans. I had the art. They tested my heart, passed everything, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So they just said, they put me through a neurologist. A neurologist seeing me, they said, change your diet slightly. So I changed my diet, alhamdulillah, being clean. No problems with my eye. And the boxing people, those boxing border control, those guys, <clears throat> they're very strict. So they put me through the, through the test, passed everything. So alhamdulillah, I should be fine now. So after all <clears throat> that, and then knowing that, you know, professional boxing, you could get hurt in mm. there. And now, because you've been inactive, mm. well, you were inactive for a, a bit of a while. Did you ever think that, no, I'm not going to no, do this? N- no, never crossed my mind. Yeah. Never crossed my mind. So you always just wanted always to stick in boxing? Fo- I've always been, I knew I could box. And I yeah. knew if there was something wrong with me, it would happen nine years when I was a kid. Yeah. From 13 to 22, I was fighting men, grown men. Mm-hmm. And I didn't feel any problem in my brain. So when it first happened in 2017, they said, oh, boxing too dangerous for you, don't box. I said, how? I said, how was that possible? I said, it wouldn't have happened last year or the year before, or the year before that. I said, I've been boxing, I've been active. Yeah. I never had any problems. But when if, you say you were fighting grown men, was that having an amateur fight with them or was that when just I was, sparring when, with them? Come 17, you're in the senior league. 17 is somewhat still young in mm-hmm. general life. But I would box grown men. But sparring, I was sparring men at 14, 13, 14, 15. When I first started, I was sparring. Mm-hmm. 23 years, 24 years, 25 years old, yeah. What was the most difficult fight you had at the amateur level? Uh, quite a few, but nothing, no one really, some, because the amateurs were so often... There must have been one fight that maybe stood out for you and you thought you very nearly lost that or... No, I, lo- I lost got, a few. I lost or, a few. got injured maybe. No, I lost a few in the amateurs. Um, but you have to remember, that you would fight every week, so you wouldn't, you wouldn't get really a notice of like six-week training camp. Yeah. It's not like that. I remember when school, it would be a Friday, Thursday. My trainer would call me. He goes, what are you doing tonight? Box. I said, yeah, of course. So it would be like that. 
So you could spend the whole day at school working and doing whatever you do. So, so there was no diet plan at that level either. Just basic, mm. basic home cooking. Don't eat takeaways, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So do you know setbacks like that, and then medically as well. Mm. How do you like deal with them and overcome them? Because you know it could affect people mentally. You know, it did. It did get a bit down. And, F- a few years ago, it yeah. did, but I, I just knew what I wanted and I know what I want to do. Yeah. And I know that. Like I know my skill level and I feel like the people need to see my skill level. And I've never felt any if meant if there was something wrong with me physically, like my brain or things like that, I'll be the first one to say <laughs> I'm not well enough to box. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. pushing myself, trying to prove something. I'm obviously trying to prove something, but if there's something wrong with my brain, yeah, I'll be the first one to put my hands up and say no more boxing, get a full time job. You know. And what made you known as uh, the Mexican style? Mexican style. Yeah. <laughs> Come forward fighting is well is well known. The phrase in boxing is called Mexican style. Yeah. Um, but also general life. I've told you my my backstory in terms yeah. of medically medical situations. As a, you, if you look at the Mexican people, not everything is on their plate. Yeah. You have to go out there and get it. And my dad actually nicknamed me Mexican style. He goes, "Your nick, your name is Mexican style. You need to do it like a Mexican." It's been hard, five years, four years as a mm-hmm. professional. I've only had, what, three fights. Now my career is coming back on track. But it hasn't been easy. If it was easy, you know, I, if it went to plan the way I wanted to, I'll be on top of the game, my game right now. How but many fights would you normally aim for within a year? Six fights. Six fights a year. So if you do, let's say, last three years, should be on, what, 18 fights? Mm. Yeah. So where are you hoping to see yourself in maybe five years' time? World champion. Inshallah. 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 World champion. And your weight division is currently? Well, my fight that you guys saw Saturday, yeah. it was a bit heavy because, you know, I only got my license maybe, what, in January? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was training, but I wasn't training, training, dieting. So my natural weight is really maybe 70 kilos light middleweight. But the fight that I fought, I was at super middleweight. Is is that the ideal cha- uh, weight division that you would like to be world champion in? Light middleweight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah most likely. Mm-hmm. Or or just the one below welterweight. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Is there any dream fight of your own? Did you ask me this the other day? No. Somebody asked me this. Uh, dream fight? No. Um, whoever's got the belt. Yeah. So whoever's mm-hmm. champion at the time, in three years, five years, whenever I'm up the ranks, and whoever's got the belt, I'm definitely targeting them. Inshallah. Inshallah. Hope to see you make it to the top. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Have a with you. Inshallah. Guys, tell me about you guys though. You got SWF. Tell me about it because I know guys are going to be watching this. They know yeah. I've never been on a podcast. This is my first podcast. So, so I'd like um, to know. SWF stands for Shawlite Foundation. It was uh, named after my great grandfather. And we thought we'd carry on their legacy from the religious side. Nice. Then it, my, it was actually established as a charity in uh, 2000 by my father. And. Uh, we were established as a madrasa, as an Islamic school, and as a charity, you know, doing charity work and teaching children, you know, how to read the Quran, nice. you know, how to live well and good, keeping them off the streets, like a bit of a, like a youth center. Mm. So we, we, we are used for many purposes. So the religious side, uh, for the, helping the youth, and uh, also, uh, you know, with food banks in the community so, and helping and looking after people. And that's just, our aim is just to grow and inshallah, you know, Try helping as many people as we can, not only within our community but yeah. at a national and an international level. Sure. Yeah. So you guys don't Sh- know. Shawalai Foundation, like you just mentioned, it is actually the most recent name of this organization. Yeah. The heritage of this goes back all the way fourteen hundred years to the Holy Prophet Muhammad oh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sallam. As you know, my lineage also connects with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This work has been ongoing since the days of the Holy Prophet and this organization was given different different names over the years and one of its names just before this was the Anjuman Khudamu Sufia which was operating in Pakistan mm. because we are all we all originate from Pakistan so that organization was working in Pakistan and registered over there as well and it we have several madrasas under us teaching children Quran and teaching them the national curriculum in Pakistan also mm. and we have several food banks over there we have um, places where we t- uh, look after the orphans and etc my father then moved to the UK approximately 30 35 years ago and when they came here they brought the same work over here 
and settle in the UK. But the UK and the West works very, very differently, where you have to register the charities mm-hmm. and make sure you have licenses involved and things like that. So my father registered this charity over here and named it Shawlat Foundation, which was my great grandfather's name, because mm-hmm. they were the most uh, known uh, personality in Pakistan. They were really respected and highly looked up to. So my father used their name Shawlat Foundation to carry out all the same duties within the UK and then officially registered this charity in the year 2001 approximately. And then we established this particular center over here as well in Halifax. And ever since then we have taught, I would say, if, if it's not hundreds, thousands of children within Halifax. And we've got our own food banks running. We are looking after the poor. We do our little fundraisers where we look after the uh, poor and destitute Muslims of, for example, Palestine, Yemen, Kashmir, Pakistan, Syria, and all of all those who mm-hmm. are in need. So we have our little, little projects ongoing at all times. So we're trying to extend this even further now. Sure, sure. Whereabouts in Pakistan? Pakistan in Gujarat city. Gujarat, Guj- Gujarat city uh, is very famously known as Jad P. Sayyid Walayt Ali Shah Sahib, Rahmatullah He was a saint who resided in Gujarat. He was born in approximately 1888 and passed away on 31st of July 1970, making him roughly, I'm not very good with my maths, but mm-hmm. he was around eight, between 80, 90 years old when he passed away. Even his date of birth is obviously disputed. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, all we know is that he passed away around 88 to 90 years of age. Yeah, yeah. But yes, his shrine is located in the city of Gujarat. Sure. And he had thousands and upon, I, w- I would say, if, if not thousands, even into millions, he had students yeah. who learned the Holy Quran of him, learned about Islam from him, and other subjects such as math, science, physics, biology in those days. And he was one of the most looked up to teachers in the whole of Pakistan. Mm. So we just brought that same legacy of his same work and trying to replicate that within the UK. Sure. Like I said, my father came here 30 years ago approximately. He unfortunately passed away just two years ago suddenly. And now we have taken over, me and my brother, and we That's are trying to carry out the same work, yeah. but just in a bit more, uh, you can say, modern way. Sure. And trying to bring this, bring some more awareness on social media via youtube instagram snapchat and all these other platforms yeah how to reach out to the youth like that more yes you know I mean? when i first moved in fact i didn't tell you guys this i heard about you guys mm-hmm. when i first moved i heard about your dad and stuff like that saying good great work and you were basically like mm-hmm. the main the main master in in, in halifax yeah mm-hmm. even my father when they came to the uk they actually came to the main mosque in halifax mm. And they were employed at the main mosque for approximately 14 years. Mm. And they got the masjid built and the extensions and all the other madrasas that are currently operating under them today. After that, in the year 2000, they left the main mosque and established our own centre. And ever since then, we have been working over here. How old was your dad when he passed away? How old? He was only 67. 67. He he was suddenly one day... There was absolutely nothing wrong with him, yeah. and it was just after, shortly after, you know, COVID restrictions when they were being lifted. Yeah, yeah. And he led Fajr namaz, yeah, the, the early morning prayer. Sure. And whilst he led that, he was completely fine, no complaints, no nothing. And as he was walking back towards the house, I was with him, and we were having a conversation, and all of a sudden he just collapsed in front of my eyes, mm-hmm. and that was it, the end. Mm. Never in a million years we thought that. Just like that. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. it, it was just like that. And the strange thing is that before him passing away, he used to often say that there will come a time, there will come a day where I will just go like this, I'll collapse and you won't even know. Mm. And that's exactly what happened that day. But yes, unfortunately, we lost him two years ago and we've gone through a really difficult period ever since. But Imagine, alhamdulillah, yeah. alhamdulillah, we are trying our level best. Mm-hmm. and trying to move this forward and carry on his legacy and the legacy in fact of our all uh, i would say ancestors yeah sure in fact spreading the uh, message of peace and love which is the teachings of islam yeah sure we're also called uh, zahra educational and cultural center as well and even though 
many people don't know that like we because we've been quiet on the cultural side due to you know some limited uh circumstances but um we we've always had this uh aim that we, we will always try to help the youth and keeping them you know off the streets we've got activities to, for them in the mosque like even we've got a table tennis a snooker table nice. a pool table we've got a playstation we've got screens just so that they can come in and they're not they're not getting in, themselves involved in crime and a bad environment atmosphere bad friends because unfortunately you know in our community there's a, especially from Bradford Huddersfield Halifax up here a lot of the youngsters are involved in crime and uh, because is our unfortunately our community in stabbing drugs in a uh, you know racing with with their cars and mm. you know causing accidents and problems on the road and because of that neg- negative energy they have what advice would you give to athletes you know or youngsters like that coming up who could you know change their uh, energy from you know into negativity and some into something positive like boxing like yourself sure good question um pick a sport pick a hobby yeah um just no maybe write down may no i wouldn't say write down but have try get a mentor try an older figure an uncle a dad for guidance sort of thing is that's why a lot of guys who go straight don't have a role model in their life yeah. someone like the dad or the uncle or even just an older older person who can tell them what to do but um it it just depends what they're into it just mm. depends what they're into whether they yeah. like sport going the sport Going the go go the sport route if they're into education going the education route or if not or out the other two just get a job if you're yeah. over sixteen seventeen eighteen you don't want to do sports you don't want to do um, education yeah. get a job get a full time job and I always t- I actually tell people like oh I meet the youngsters get a job and get save your money yeah save your money for sure put and then help your family I think this is foundation for sure. and uh, in you know like in the modern era as a fellow muslim brother yes. you know the likes of khabib you know a lot of people bring up uh, muhammad ali and maybe he we didn't get to see much of him yeah. because he was you know a long time ago but someone like khabib how would you uh, what's your views upon that and how would you how could you replicate that for you know young muslims views in what sense of, khabib it does have yeah. like a lot of young muslims talk about khabib and yeah. his, the way he carries himself yeah. and they want to be like khabib me personally yeah of course i think he's yeah. he's a great fighter stuff like that I'm not into UFC. Yeah. So I don't look at Habib. Um obviously for me Muhammad Ali is still fresh in yeah. my mind. Yeah, yeah. Although he fought mm. 50, years 50 years ago Muhammad Ali I think his his name will live on forever. Yeah. He's just blessed. He's just a blessed man. So has he inspired you like in Yeah, Muhammad Ali for sure. Yeah. For sure. But we got a current guy right now people don't know how, obviously you guys know I know him personally Anthony yeah. Joshua. And although he's not Muslim, there's yeah. a lot of rumors that he is Muslim. Yeah. He's not a Muslim, yeah. but he has all the characteristics of a Muslim. Yeah. The way he sits down, the way he carries carries himself, the way he speaks, everything about him, his body language, the way he meets people. I went to America with Anthony Joshua. I told the kind of guy he is. Mm. He's a big star, don't you think? In the yeah. UK, in America, same thing. But obviously, some people don't know him. We went over to <clears throat> four or five different cities. We went to. Uh, we was in Texas. Houston, Texas. It was me, him, and his cousin. We got out. T- we had like this, we hide out this van, you know, for to help mm-hmm. us go about everywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> we got out the van, and he could see a couple taking a selfie together. They were like maybe forty, fifty years old, and he goes to the woman, "Oh, would you like me to take that for you?" So they, and they start posing, and he's there taking the photo for for however yeah. long a minute or two. He didn't think they had no idea who he was. And I go to him. Do you know, do you know who that was? They go, no. Who? I said, Anthony Joshua. I said, he's the number one heavyweight in the world. Yeah. And they go, cool. Well, let me Google him. So they Google him. They're like, oh, yeah. oh my god. But he went off anyway. So he, he's he's very humble. Yeah. My and he has definitely all the characteristics from what I've seen. Obviously, he's not perfect. Yeah. Makes mistakes as we all do humans. But in terms of role models and things like that, the way he is. Definitely, he's the man. For so, what, sure. what's it like being, uh, you know, around him and training with Anthony Joshua? And you know, I seen, I know you've been with the likes of Canelo as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. With Joshua, I don't think it's for me. Of course, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, but it's not a big deal like how people think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that in an ego <laughs> way or anything. Yeah. I'm saying it because we grew up together. So he's just my boy. Yeah. He's just my guy. I just see him every day, normal. 
D- did you go to school together or no, did you we, just meet in the we gym? We met in the gym mm. and he's he had five years on me. He's, I think he was born in 88, I was born in 94, what, five, six years. So he I always used to look at him as a big brother. But we started roughly around the same time, 07, mm-hmm. 08. He had his first fight. End of 08, I had my first fight. Middle of 08. So we st- we had the same trainers. He is number one, for me, Number like my good friend, for sure. My good friend is always, I always supported, supported him. Coming through the ranks, same likewise with me. He would always give his time and effort with me. The only reason, you know, during his career, we were somewhat distant because I was doing my own thing in my life. He was doing his own thing in his life. I moved house. I was a bit distant doing just general yeah, life. Yeah. You know, life gets in the way. But we reconnected not too long ago. And we've been, we talk almost every day. Mm. And I'm always sending him something. And he's sending me this. And I went to America with him. About 10 days into the end of last year, I was at his fight. I go to his training camps, train did, with did, him. Did you train with him as train well? Train with him. Yeah. Do all, every school, swimming with him, practice some moves with him, help him. So how, how, how does it feel, you know, training among superstars like that? Joshua is real, it's really cool. And it's, mm-hmm. um, you could say, get a lot of attention on, my, on myself, which is pretty cool as well. Like everyone's looking at me, what I'm doing, being part of the team. But Joshua knows that that's his team, Team AJ. He's got me involved in Team AJ, but I'm still... If I wasn't boxing, if my license stuff didn't go through, I would be AJ day in, day out. I would be part of the team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But Joshua knows that I'm still got my own ambitions, my own goals. I want to be world champ. Mm-hmm. I don't want to just be, yeah, I'm with Joshua. Yeah. It's easy to do that. and yeah. He's already made it sort of thing. I could do that. But I want to be world champ myself. Yeah. I want people to come up to me and get me on talk shows like this. Yeah. <laughs> because if, if, it was, if he was here, he would be on this talk show and I'd be waiting out over there just watching over, which is cool. I have yeah. to, you support your brother, but I know I've got a lot to give to the sport. Yeah. I put it on my, after my fight the other day. What, what, what do you think is going to make you a world champion? What do you need to do? My, oh, what I, I need to do? I know it's a long way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what are your steps? What do you have so in I mind? I need to say active. You know, I haven't been fighting regular. Yeah. I mean, spot, but I'm in the gym. I'm healthy and I'm fit. So I just need more fights, more fights. And how fight how easy is it to get a fight? I leave it to my manager. I'm signed with a guy named Kevin Marie. We, I signed with it's a three year deal. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. And um, I signed with him just before COVID. And then in January 2020, he goes, How are you feeling for a fight in February? I said, yeah, sure. So I had four weeks, five weeks to prepare and I fought in February. But then, as you know, a few weeks later, COVID hit. Yeah. And then I had a problem with my medical in 21 and now in 2022. And I just fought. So we just started. There's no real shows in January. February was a bit quiet. I just fought in March Mm -hmm. recently. Ramadan, I'm off. No boxing during Ramadan. No competitive boxing. I would train, but I wouldn't fight. And come May, June, July, just stay mm. active. Just stay active. That's the goal. As long as I can get the fights in and show my talent. Because a lot of people already gained interest. Yeah. Just to see one fight. It was just one fight, really. But And I wasn't somewhat nervous because I was nervous in that sense. But I knew what I could do. Because I would go up training four or five days a week. And I yeah. do that four or five so, days a week. What's your training normally like? What sort of acti- would, activities would you do? I would train four days a week, Monday to Thursday, yeah. twice a day. Mm-hmm. I would, in the morning, I would run and maybe I'll go on this bike machine at the same time. And then uh, I'll run maybe 30 <laughs> minutes because I only box 20 minutes. Mm. So you don't need to run for an hour if you're only boxing 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, and then I'll go on a bike machine. And then after the bike machine, I would do some groundwork. I would do like push-ups, sit-ups. Yeah. lunges squats those kind of stuff not too much heavy weights so i would do sets like that and then in the evening i would go boxing and i'll just do that for four days fridays i work saturdays i work some days i work that's my current road, um, <clears throat> regime saturdays after work i may run or before work i may run early morning i start at seven so i'd wake up at four o'clock yeah and i'll run just mm-hmm. to stay active yeah so, you know, you've told us about, you know, your goals in boxing and what you'd like to achieve in your career. Is there any aim or a goal that you'd like to achieve in your life outside the ring? No, purely 
fully boxing. Fully boxing. Fully boxing. And of course, religious aspect. Yeah. Yeah, go Hajj, inshallah. Yeah. Yeah, Hajj. Mm-hmm. But nothing, no worldly goals. No, no, no the worldly No, yeah. no worldly goals. No, no. Purely boxing. Whatever happens after yeah. happens. And yeah. once you retire, what would you love to be remembered as? Stay with, oh, how old? I- ideally yeah. world champion. World champion, but yeah. like one of the best. One of the best. One of the yeah. best. I'm not going to say the best. Yeah. Because my respect for Muhammad Ali is, yeah. he's bigger than boxing. So yeah. he's, you know, he's the best. But one of the best, for sure. When people Inshallah. talk about yeah. Mayweather, Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, my name is in the mix somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> if it's in the bottom, it's okay. But if it's somewhere yeah. there, it's cool. C- currently, as you know, there's a lot of Asian uh, Muslims yeah. already in the boxing. Yeah. And they're making some really big names yeah. for themselves. Yeah. If somebody was in your weight division, an Asian Muslim fighter, would you fight them? It depends oh, 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 how it, oh, oh, it depends how they carry themselves, and if if it, it has to be done, it has to be done. But I don't. It's not something that when, I really when want. When you to. say it depends how they carry themselves, yeah. what sort of person would it be that you would actually fight? Someone and which who, one would you actually reject? Someone mm-hmm. who's got bad attitude. Yeah, you know there are some yeah, yeah, yeah. guys out there who got bad attitudes. They need to be. You humbled. know what I mean? <laughs> they need to be humbled. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But if they're cool and they're nice, they collect calm, yeah. cool, collected. And what would you do in the scenario if? They were really nice, humble. Yeah. But the fight was a tight shot. Yeah. What would you do? I'll probably fire him, I'll be honest. Yeah. I'll probably fire him. <laughs> but you don't have to remember, it's not personal. Correct, yeah. correct. It's just a sport, end it's of the day. It's just work, it's just business. Mm-hmm. We don't need to be cut, uh, swearing at each other's moms and stuff no, no, like no, that. No, that th- th- that's ridiculous. Yeah, that's, ridiculous. That, that's bizarre. We don't need to be... That's not sportsmanship. No, it's not. We don't need to go out of the way and mm-hmm. try to promote the fight. We shake hands. We're cool. We're going to fight. After yeah. the fight, we shake hands. We'll mm-hmm. probably go get some food. I'm very cool. Calm. I'm chilled. Yeah. Even my fight the other day, I don't know if you saw, but I was with my opponent. Afterwards, he got changed and stuff like that. I met him. I said, cool, you're all right. How are you doing? So there's no bad yeah. blood or anything. There's yeah, never yeah, bad yeah. blood. Sometimes in the future, you might have to promote a fight. You might have to say and act a certain way. Yeah. But you have to stay clean this is important in life stay yeah. clean don't be doing what some fighters have been doing and talking yeah. about <laughs> x y and z you have to stay clean yeah, yeah. Like joshua is a clean guy and that's yeah. what i picked up from him he doesn't get involved his name is not at his name is not in a mix he's not a muslim end of the day he can be in a nightclub or pub yeah, yeah. or doing this yeah. and doing that he may have done certain things in his life but he's not out there that's not common news Joshua's doing this now, Joshua's doing that. Joshua's with this person. Joshua, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's his personal life. That's his We're personal life. Really interested in that. Yeah, but it's not on, on the news. So my, that's my focus as well. Like, so just focus on yourself. Clean, yeah, yeah, yeah. clean living. Speaking clean, treating people nicely. Stay humble. Mm. Don't walk around like somebody you're not. Yeah. You know what I mean? I only, I've got a nice little watch now. I've only got this. Someone gave it to me. Before that, I know no jewelry, yeah. nothing on me. You know what I mean? I, the car I drive is nothing. It's simple, nothing fancy. All I want to do is box, look good. Everyone clapping. I like it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Has there ever been any time when you walked out towards the ring and there's been a big crowd? Has that made you nervous or no, ever make you think? Maybe when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Maybe when I was a kid. Or, yeah. or what's the biggest crowd that you fought in front of? Maybe like. 2000 maybe 3000 yeah when i the amateurs or i don't mm. know like it's usually a couple thousand maybe yeah i thought it was a, okay i was on a bit early the other night but mm. my fight before that it was towards the main event and it was quite packed mm. out at the time but i but as a kid i would probably get nervous but is that something you're used to now yeah i think i think everyone gets nervous having but, lots of paparazzis around you and uh, all these bright lights and you know what i do like um I just know the ring, as soon as the bell goes, I'll be okay. So I could yeah. be feeling, I could be trembling. But as, as soon as I uh, get in the ring and the bell goes, I'm okay. And I say to my mm-hmm. duas when I'm warming up, I say my duas and I'm okay. I feel fine. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. feel, oh, what am I doing here? Yeah. Yeah. Because you started your pro career quite late. Mm. Um, how come you never, did you ever think about going down the Olympic route? Just like Anthony Joshua, someone you look up to. Like? You know, like amateur boxing, yeah. three rounds. It's, it's not Mexican style. Yeah. It's not. It's hit and move, point scoring. I don't really fight like that. Yeah. So for me to go the Olympic route, I would need to like change my style. I was not 
that inclined that in that way of fighting there's a certain way of to fight yeah to get to the olympics especially in my weight class yeah you need to fight hit and move and score points and get out of there be really quick on your feet yeah i don't i don't really fight like that too. i never made i didn't reach any national finals but i beat national champions yeah in the sometimes in sports in, in these kind of tournaments you need a bit of luck i never really had the best of luck Mm. But I never really had the style. My style is... Is it something you would consider now as well? If you got the chance or not? You can't go to the Olympics as a professional. Mm-hmm. So that's out of the way. But I don't... I don't look back. I don't yeah. look back in that. I don't think... There's a lot of controversy involved in the Olympics and a bit of a bad rep. It's not as what it used to be like how maybe 20 yeah. years ago, 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. But it is, it is good. It's definitely... If, if I was able to do it, don't get me wrong, I would do it. And I would recommend anyone who boxing, yeah. if they're 15, 16, 17, go to the Olympics. Because if you don't go to the Olympics, getting, your, getting you, yourself going as a professional is a bit difficult. But mm-hmm. where there's a will, there's a way. And if you believe in yourself and you know you can do it, you can do it. Main mm-hmm. thing, like, for example, I've taken losses in the past. And it happens. Cause some great fighters have lost in the past. Yeah. So don't get disheartened. But when you get disheartened and you quit, that's the end. You don't get this high and then you keep going, bigger the better things will come eventually. You know what it says in the Quran, after a good day, after hardship comes ease. Correct. After yeah. ease come hardship. Same in boxing. So you yeah. don't don't take it personal. Yeah. Yeah. And so how quick would you actually like to get to the top in your pro career then? Well, because I'm I'm twenty seven and people think, yeah. Oh, you're getting on a bit. You have to remember I never haven't taken like uh, damage yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm not like wear and tear on my body because mm. I haven't been active and I, th- I feel like the new 30 in this day and age 30 is maybe the new 25 yeah because the current guy who's number one in the world his name is Terence Crawford he's 34 35 and he's on top of his game yeah so I don't really look at, at my age and think oh I'm getting young I'm getting sorry old or yeah my time is running out no no I don't I don't want to rush because of these things i want to start carry on doing what i'm doing and fight once every six weeks every eight weeks yeah inshallah, yeah, inshallah. part of the game is winning and losing yes i know we're talking a lot about winning but i would we would like to know what was your first loss like how did you feel after your first loss as an amateur fighter or maybe even a professional Prof- amateur were you, amateur di- were, were you disheartened amateur were you upset? Bro- amateur was broken and i wanted to quit Mm-hmm. I wanted to quit Was that in the really young days? Young days, 13, I was young I mm-hmm. just started like <clears throat> But I wanted to quit and I had I got it out of my system 10 minutes crying, or whatever it was mm-hmm. I was young But that's it. the next day I went back to the gym And then The ball continues so where They say there's a saying Win, lose or draw Make sure you're in the gym on Monday Correct <laughs> You know <laughs> <laughs> so when I I lost as a professional and you shouldn't be losing as a professional especially early in your career really mm-hmm. especially I shouldn't have lost but I lost and then I had that mindset like I know I could but do better was that lost uh, did you lose on points or no what happened was I was boxing and I got caught with a shot so I went down and so the referee went one two three and my corner team at the time they threw in the towel. Oh, but, right. but I got up at three and I was four, five, six. I'm standing, I'm looking at the ref. I'm bouncing because the referee has to count to eight. Yeah. It mand- it's called mandatory eight count. So one, two, three, I'm down, I'm up. Towel's at three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm like this, I'm bouncing. I said, yeah, ref, I'm okay. Referee said, waved off. I said, why? He, put, he goes, look at the towel. I said, why? Mm-hmm. And that was the end of it. But no one knows. It's like, I know it's on paper. It's considered a loss. Yeah. I don't consider it a loss, really. Yeah. On paper, it looks like a loss. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Great fires. Great fires. More great fires than me I've lost before. Mm-hmm. So it's no big deal, really. And I've grown so much from losing. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, like, what made your team throw in the towel? Because that wasn't my team who threw the towel in. My trainer who was going to do McCorner, his wife was in hospital. He had to cancel the day before. He goes, I can't do it. I'll get some other guys to cover. Mm. So the guys who covered me had no idea who I was. You know what I mean? Wow. It was a disaster. They, I don't even know their name. Did, they don't did, know did, my... Did you not have a go at them? No, or... no, no. It was too late. What am I going to say? 
Yeah. What am I going to say? So that's the story. But I never... Cause I got a clip with a, sh- a shot that I shouldn't have got hit with, but it's boxing. Yeah. You get hit, something happens. Mm-hmm. But the guys who threw the towel in, I don't know their name, they don't know my name. I don't even remember their face. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. So far in your boxing career, which is the best moment you've enjoyed and which has been the worst moment that you've disliked? Best what, and what, worst. What would you say? Best and worst has to be my first fight. I yeah. know I was living. I was living in London. I, I can understand it was the worst one. Yeah. But why was that your best one? My life has improved um, on a different level since I since I lost. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll tell you why. You know, my family moved to Halifax in May 2018. Yeah. I also moved with them May 2018. I moved to Halifax. I would say June, July, August. It was Ramadan, May 2018. Mm-hmm. So we moved in Ramadan, and then June, July, August. I would say for three months, summer. 18, the World Cup was going on and everything. And I said to my parents, when I first arrived in Halifax, I hated it. I said, what's this? Yeah. I'm from the big city. <laughs> I'm a complete city boy. Yeah. Everything about me, city life. I said, what's this? My first day, miserable, sad, no friends. I had some family, but I didn't know them. I didn't know my, I have my dad's sisters here, my papa, my papa, two of them, they're here. I didn't know them. I didn't know their family or anything. You know, stuff like this. I only knew my uncles over in London, sort of thing, if, in terms of family. But I never grew up with these kind of guys. Um, but no friends here, nothing to do. I didn't know where to, like, no guidance. And even me, grown man, only three, four years ago, a grown man, I still needed guidance. Where am I? I was in, like, I just look outside, there's hills here. There's no hills where I live. You know what I mean? This countryside, right. countryside sort of thing. <coughs> I didn't know where to eat, where to, where to go, where's the food. I used to go to Asda. Then I used to, I don't live far from Asda, but I used to go my my sat nav on my maps on how to get back home. I didn't like it. You know, yeah. I didn't know the direction. There was no friends and stuff like that. It wasn't nice. And I said to my dad, "What am I doing here?" There was no boxing either. There yeah. was, a, there was. I went. I, my manager over in London said he sent me over to see some guy. And I went to see him and I was training with him. It was in London. In London, I had all these celebrity lifestyles. And then mm, I come over here yeah. and I had to do this and certain things. Like I wasn't happy the way they were training me. And I said to my dad, like, because I just got my, remember, I just got my license. You remember 2017, I told you there was no license. Yeah. Then the whole year, it was just less than a year, I had no license. And I got my license, but we were moving after a few weeks to, to Halifax. So I couldn't capitalize. In London, because in London I have everything set up: my boxing gym, my friends, my my whole team, mm-hmm. my gym, everything. My whole career like was there. So we moved here. There was nothing here for me, and I was training. I didn't enjoy it. I said to my dad, "I'm moving back to London." Yeah. I said, "I don't like this." <laughs> I said, "You stay in Halifax. <laughs> I'm not. This is not for me." <laughs> so September, I moved to London by myself. Wrong. Before I used to live with my family. Now yeah. I moved to London by myself. I started renting a room. There was like other people there. So yeah. I was just renting the room. And London, you can imagine the prices like yeah. sort Sky of thing. High. So I was renting, I was working, and I rang my manager, who was I've got a different manager compared to my London one now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I rang my manager, I said, you know, I need a fight. Because I come here for, to fight. I was really like because my career wasn't going nowhere. I said, I want to fight. So they booked me a fight. And at the time I I remember when, two months before the fight, I was really out of overweight because i spent three months in halifax going to my popos and out and about eating eating i wasn't yeah. training so they said this the fight is at this weight and i made a mistake those days i cut so much weight come fight night i remember like i didn't like i wasn't i was in good shape like physically but i wasn't strong you know what i mean i didn't mm-hmm. cut the weight properly i, did, I lost so much weight yeah. in a short space of time so i was a bit weak um so what's the question i'm losing track <laughs> um your best moments and your my worst best and worst. Moments. Yeah, I'm yeah. oh, sorry, my bad. So we come fight night. I lost, and then I said, "Listen, I've been here for three months. I lost. I had a good time doing my thing in London, you know, like mm-hmm. training and stuff like that. But it wasn't. If you want to, if you want to go further in your career, you need to do things properly. You need, you need support, more support, family support. So." After that fight, I said, let me go Halifax again. Let me try do something in Halifax. So in 20, I moved in 2019. And then I said, set a boxing. Let me just, I wanted a box, of course. But I said, let me settle in, settle, settle in first. 
So I met one guy, he said, oh, there's work here. I'm looking for, I just look pretty bad. So I was working six, seven months, eight months. Settled in, got to know the area, got to know the people. Took my time. Joined the boxing gym. Like, settled in, yeah. it was nice. Like, I was finding my feet. Like, I started feeling at home. Mm-hmm. And then I said, I need to box again. But the manager in London, like, he didn't know... I said, he goes, where are you boxing? In London or are you boxing? In Halifax. I said, I'm boxing in Yorkshire. I said, I'm not going to London. I said, all my people are here now. I said, And then he tried to set me up a fight, but it, the finances didn't work out. Mm-hmm. So, so I didn't fight in 2019. To come 20, and then I seen, and then I went over to see my uncle. I said, listen, I need, I'm going to fight. I want to fight. I want to come back. I said, I've just lost. It's been almost a year now. And then he, he goes, I'll help you out. And then I met another guy just by luck. And he goes, I've got a manager for you over here. And his name's Kevin Marie. So I got speaking to Kevin Marie and then I signed. And then it was Christmas period. So these guys weren't really, you know, working sort of thing. So this mm-hmm. guy, he goes, come see me. Come in January. So we met up in January. And, then he, and I was already training throughout Christmas because I was focused on making the new year, 2020. You know what yeah. I mean? Like New mm-hmm. Year, focus, get back fighting. I'm gonna. F- I said I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna sign a new deal. Everything was looking good January 2020. Then he goes, "Are you ready next month? Fight." I said, "Yeah, I'll fight." I actually fought in Oldham, where we where I fought the right, other day. Yeah. Then I fought in February 2020. I won. I boxed very se- sensible because if you remember what happened in my first fight, mm-hmm. yeah, I got dropped. I made made silly mistakes. I got dropped. So I fought very careful just to win. Just to win. No, no, not for entertainment purposes, not to show off, not to do anything, just to win, mm-hmm. to get back on, on track. Yeah. You know, I didn't show no, no, none of my real skill. I just didn't want to get hit. I want to play safe, hit and move, hit and move. <laughs> Nothing fancy. So I did that because then I was going to fight again in March or April. But then COVID hit. Yeah. In COVID, but that was the best thing because I found my feet in Halifax. I said, "There's more to life than London." Because before my life was just all about London, mm-hmm. but there's way more. I've been Manchester now, Sheffield. I've been doing so many other things. I went abroad. I actually got married in in when COVID hit. There wasn't much like for me to do sort of thing boxing wise. I always wanted to get married. You asked yeah. about goals, of course. Get married, have have a family. Yeah. Charlotte, that sort of stuff. So that was one of my goals, to get married. I actually got married. And um, <clears throat> so we, we've been building, we've been working. And then now 21, obviously my eye situation. But I was still training. Yeah. And I reconnected with Joshua. Joshua knows some of my story. He, I told him, when I, and especially when I went there. Mm-hmm. I was going down London, I seen Joshua again. We reconnected. When Joshua seen me after a long time, his, smile, his face went like that. Yeah. He hasn't seen me after a long time. He gave me a big hug. He introduced me to everyone. This is this this is my boy. This is my boy. This is my boy. This is my boy. JB, yeah. Gibran, mm-hmm. all that stuff, Mexican style. <laughs> he knows. It was really cool. And then ever so we reconnected. And obviously I wasn't fighting, so he said, Your team, this is your team. You're in the yeah. team now. He goes, You train me. Sort of thing. Like I was his not his trainer, yeah. but like advisor, like the fights. If he was fighting someone, I would watch him. I said, oh, he makes this mistake. You need mm. to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was too big for me to actually box. Yeah. So I never boxed with him. Have you ever had sparring sessions with sparring, him? Sparring, yeah, just to joke around. Though He's too, not joke around, but I would come forward and he would just practice. Yeah. Mm. That kind of stuff. Not for, not for like one-on-one fully. He's too yeah, big for heavy me. Heavyweight, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Heavyweight, yeah, yeah. So he had me in his team, and then, and yeah, so we've just been we've just been cool like that, being in his team. But obviously, that's his boys; they're not my boys. Yeah, I've got my now my license come. I've got my own team. Yeah, and I'm building, and and I've learned things from what he's doing, and I've taken it in. That's a good thing being around world class athlete. What he's doing, yeah, I just basically took his his formula. Yeah. And put it in mind rather than mm. like if I without him I would make certain mistakes. But because I've seen that he had a good setup, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do it like this. Yeah. Has he ever come down to Yorkshire and you know advised you as well? 
in Sheffield. 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 Because he had a gym in house in Sheffield, so yeah. I would see him over there. <coughs> yeah. <clears throat> he hasn't been in Halifax, but he wants to come Halifax, but where he walks and yeah, everyone just, everybody's gonna, everyone's you know, on him. But well, he said he will come in Charlotte. He goes, after his boxing career, he'll be a free man. He'll be everywhere. Yeah. You know, I've got uh, quite a few friends from London as well. And uh, when I met with them, you know, they actually didn't know what Halifax was before. Mm. So, did, had you heard of Halifax? Because a lot of people think it's I, a bank. I, of, I yeah. heard of Halifax. Oh, oh, born but, in Halifax. Yeah. I mean, oh, your the boys guys, and stuff. Yeah. No, the, the kids, the guys who I grew up with, yeah. they said, oh, the bank. Yeah. yeah. Like, where are you going? <laughs> and they used to make a joke. Oh, yeah. Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Yorkshire boy. Yeah. Like that. Uh, used, they used to call me Yorkshire boy when I said I'm yeah. from Yorkshire. But yeah, nothing. They just said the bank. They just didn't know anything about Halifax. Yeah. Never heard of it. They, now that when I moved when I was moving and I said oh Huddersfield because I know a lot of my guys watch football and yeah, I think yeah. Huddersfield were in the Premier League or Correct. yeah yeah so I was just saying oh do you know Huddersfield just near there yeah <laughs> yeah yeah or Leeds if yeah. anything Leeds I was yeah. saying Leeds previously because Leeds is it's quite well yeah. known big city yeah but it's good yeah, here because yeah. it's only like forty minutes from Manchester Sheffield yeah. I can get to Sheffield. I, I know in the beginning you didn't actually like coming back to yeah Halifax. yeah. But what's your views now? Oh, I love it. Would I you like settled, stay in Halifax bro. I settled, now? I'll be honest. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Yorkshire. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. Halifax all sorts. So is the majority yeah. of your fights going to be up north here now as well? Probably see you. It just depends on... on yeah, most likely, yeah. I'll pay for a few fights and then yeah. we'll see. I might go on a world tour in Charlotte. Who knows Inshallah. what happens in there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So which social media platforms can the viewers follow you on and support you? I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. Mm-hmm. Is at Mexican Sound ninety four. Mm-hmm. And just to let you guys know, hopefully, I'm just waiting for a manager to give me a, give me a call on next fight end of May. Looking forward to seeing you guys ringside again. Inshallah. 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 And uh, just want to say thanks a lot for having me at Shower Lead Foundation. It's been an honor. Real mm-hmm. good. Thank Looking you. You're welcome. To may Allah grant you success. Inshallah. Oh. I mean, thank you to yourself as well for uh, coming on, and it's been a pleasure to have you here. And inshallah, good luck with your fight. And remember guys, uh, Gibran will also be back here again near the time of his fight. And uh, remember to like this video, share and subscribe. And may you have a blessed Ramzan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.